For those of you who uh, know a little bit of physics, I'll see if I can put a, a little bit more of a backbone to this sort of thing. Um, some of you will be familiar with the fact that the speed of a wave is equal to its frequency times its wavelength. Um, as you get further along in physics, you sort of start forgetting about the idea of frequency and wavelength, and you start thinking in terms of two things called the angular frequency, omega, and the wave number, k. And these are quite simply related to the frequency and the wavelength. The angular frequency is just 2 pi times the frequency, and the wave number is just 2 pi divided by the wavelength, lambda. And so, in a higher levels of physics, you start to see graphs that look a little bit like this, where you plot the angular frequency omega against the wave number k, and these are things known as dispersion relations, and they be, they're called that because they tell you about the speeds of waves with various frequencies in your system, and how you end up with dispersion, which is um, one set of frequencies travelling at a different speed to another, and so they kind of disperse in space or time as they move through some particular medium. So if you imagine, um, say, light in a vacuum as a dispersionless medium, what you find is that um, omega versus k is given by a straight line, and what this means is that the velocity of every single frequency in that system is exactly the same. Okay? If we're dealing with light, it's the speed of light. If we're dealing with waves moving in some dispersionless medium, then it's whatever the speed those waves move at. For example, if you're in a... Um, in air, it's roughly dispersionless, and all different frequencies travel at the speed of sound. Okay? For those of you who've done a little bit of solid state physics, um, in that subject you deal with lattice vibrations, which is basically just sound moving in materials, by um, creating a model known as the 1D coupled oscillator chain. And so what you do is you treat your material as a whole pile of atoms, all joined together by springs. And if you do this thing, you end up with a dispersion relation that looks a little bit like this red one up here, okay, it, it curves downwards like this and follows a sort of absolute value of sine half ka dependence. And if you try to understand the uh, Star Wars laser pistol sound from that perspective you run into a bit of a conflict because if your graph curves over like this what it says is that your higher frequencies travel slower than your lower frequencies and if you think about that, it means that the sound should go the other way, right? Instead of going from high fre frequency to low frequency, this sort of noise, it should go the other way around. The low frequency should get there first and you should have a noise coming out. If you, you suddenly find out that that model doesn't work quite so well for this problem and the thing that's missing is that you're not accounting for the stiffness that you have in a piece of wire. And when you do that properly, uh, you end up with a dependence that goes slightly differently. It follows this blue line up here and it goes a little bit like k squared. And then suddenly you get back this idea that your higher frequencies travel faster than your lower frequencies and you predict that the sound should come out the way that it does. It goes tshoo. Anyway, if you're interested in reading more about that, there's a really excellent paper on it called Slinky Whistlers by uh, Frank Crawford from the University of California at Berkeley. Um, it's published in the American Journal of Physics and that contains uh, all the details of building up a model that allows you to get this sort of thing instead of what you normally get for your 1D chain of coupled oscillators.